event as ESPN2 Friday Nights presented by Budweiser continues. Mark Johnson and Jorge Lasierva for the IBF Super Flyweight title. Well, Mark Johnson comes in here regarded by many as one of the best. Let's take a closer look at Mark Johnson. Names like Floyd, Oscar, Felix, Shane, and Floyd are the familiar ones mentioned in the pound-for-pound -pound debate. But Mark Johnson at 115 pounds is often overlooked due to this country's interest in the higher weights. However, his ring accomplishments have made him a giant amongst little men. He has not lost a fight in almost nine and a half years and has accumulated a record of 37 and one with 26 knockouts. That's while winning two world titles as he stakes his claim for being one of boxing's finest. I beat all the best flyweights that were out there. I knocked them out or even won a close or good decision. So that's why I rate me being as in the top 10 at the pound for pound. Not only that, it's that if I move to Mexico, I'd be a local hero. He won the IBF flyweight title in May of 1996 with a first round knockout of Francisco Teodor. Then went on to defend that belt seven times, often dominating every round of any of those fights which did not end by KO. In April of this year, he stepped up in weight to capture the IBF super flyweight title with a masterful performance against Ratanachi Borapin of Thailand. Tonight, he takes on 25-year-old Jorge Lasierva, ranked number 10 by the IBF. If successful, Johnson is looking forward to making big money. Eric Morrell, ranked number three by the IBF, laid his claim to Johnson's title last week, yet the champ is looking elsewhere for the moment. Mark Johnson, Marco Antonio Barrera is a money fight. Mark Johnson, Eric Morales is a money fight. Mark Johnson, Timothy Austin. Number one on the list, Mark Johnson, Prince Ahmed, is a money fight. Until Irk Mariah proves himself that he's a great fighter, then it won't be a money fight. So for me, it's fights, like I say, it's not only for the belts, it's a business now. Well, Mark Johnson will, of course, come in here as the favorite after doing all those special things, the big fights in his career. Teddy Atlas takes a look at what makes Mark Johnson special technically in Atlas's world. For Mark Johnson, although only five foot three inches and 115 pounds, he's become one of boxing's little giants. The IBF super flyweight champ is fast, and because of his special speed, he can sometimes break the rules, a la Roy Jones Jr., by jumping in with hooks before his opponent can react. The 28-year-old Johnson has the ability to stay calm and look to find openings. Here he makes his opponent lean forward with the left hand, then he goes over to the right to find an open body shot. Johnson's speed and elusiveness makes opponents over-anxious and desperate with their punches. Here he makes the fighter load up on the right hand, then slips it. He then lands his own left uppercut. But despite his enormous talent, Johnson has a real fighter's temperament. And because of that attitude, he can sometimes lose concentration. And forgetting distance, he'll walk straight into punches. Overall, though, tonight should be a happy birthday for Johnson. He figures to be much too sharp for his opponent. So there we are. There's Teddy's look at what will make this fight very special here for Mark Johnson. Now, Teddy, as we take a look at this fight here, you talk about Mark Johnson doing some very good things to body work. That's a plus, but sometimes it may not be a plus for him, right? Yeah, sometimes, you know, you go to something too much, it can backfire on you. He likes to go over. Mark Johnson, I'm the southpaw. He likes to go over outside the shoulder. That's smart. And he brings his shoulder back. Good body puncher. But sometimes he gets a little reckless. He's a little wide. And when he's wide, he could get caught in between that punch. Might get caught right in the microphone. Then if he comes in here, that also can be a good facet for him being that he's a southpaw. Yeah, he knows how to use that southpaw stance. He's a southpaw. He slips over here. Now, what do you think I'm going to hit you with? A right hook. It's coming. Bang. He throws ah. the opposite punch. He's a real smart guy, that Mark Johnson. Mark Johnson, very slick and very sharp. So that is something we'll look for. Let's take a look at the fighters. They're in the ring right now. Mark Johnson. And there is Jorge Lasierva getting his introduction. Some key things on him, 14 and two, three draws with 10 knockouts coming in. 
And Mark Johnson across the way has a sterling mark, 28 years old. Talked about his long unbeaten streak, 37 and one, 26 KOs, a loss in his second fight. Closing in on a decade of being unbeaten. And he'll get his introduction now. That's it ever first and then Johnson. As you take a look at Johnson, unified rules govern this contest. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight count will be employed. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell at all. Only the referee can stop the fight, although physicians get input. And with accidental cuts, you go to the scorecards after four rounds. Whoever's ahead wins. If it's under four rounds, you have a technical draw. Uh, Mark Johnson and Jorge Lasierva come to the center of the ring. Referee is Steve Smoger. They touch up, and we are ready to go. Mark Johnson, violent instructions in the corner, a little bit of motivation. Okay, camera, anytime you're ready. He's in here raring to go. 37 and 1, 26 knockouts. Maybe one of his last fights in this division he's only put on four pounds in eight years in the ring and he may be moving up well he's a fast starter so you gotta watch a lot of times his mo has been to start fast and then if he doesn't get a guy out of there then he slows down into a mode where he gets a little bit cute in there well his people said that they were hoping that this could be done in the second round as you take a look at the experience in johnson's favor get out, get out fight yourself. numbers good. the rounds the average length of the bout the same so about a third of the round through the sixth round of this one you'd expect some fireworks if we're here that long johnson can be cute he can also be explosive wide right hand by lasierva lasierva had never been stopped Follows in the tradition of a lot of Mexican fighters. He was born in Mexico City. Tough kid. Solid kid. Doesn't fall apart. With a guy like that, you don't want to just test the chin. You want to go to the body. Because a lot of these fighters that have good, solid chin, you can start banging the body. And then all of a sudden, later on, start getting to him. Why, why keep banging against the solid chin? And of course, Johnson's a good body puncher. Oh, he mentioned that Johnson liking to start early but he's been going the distance lately four of his last seven have gone the 12 round distance and that should play into his favor if we head into that territory tonight he would have an edge over la sierra there first round scheduled for 12 dave fontempo and teddy atlas glad you've joined us from the foxwoods on espn2 friday night fights that's if you have a nose. He can't be just what sometimes you think of as traditional Mexican, Mexican fighters where you just walk in. Obviously, he knows that Johnson's very fast. Johnson's a good counterpuncher. So he's not trying to lead right now and leave himself open for a counterpunch opportunity. He's trying to change distance, not make Johnson lead, make Johnson fall in a little bit. He's being smart right now, Jorge Lasieva. Johnson looking downstairs, jabbing downstairs. As he, he knows if he gets something else going. Yeah, if Lasierva just walks in, he knows he'll walk right into the counterpunch ability of Johnson. So instead, he's throwing, he's stepping out, he's trying to make Johnson come out a little bit. Lasierva jabbing his way in, double jabs, and then the right hand. We would look for the right hand lead from him against the lefty. We would look for the double left hook from him against the lefty. That's provided that Johnson allows him to do those things. And right now, you mentioned that Johnson's not starting fast. He's a little tentative. He's trying to figure out Lassie ever. He sees that he's not your traditional walk-in guy. He doesn't want to leave himself open. And the first round is gone. <laughs> Second round action. 
Mark Johnson, Jorge Lasierva. IBF Super Flyweight Championship on the line. Johnson coming out. Trying to feel his way through in what became a, a rather tentative opening round. Let's take a look at the numbers in the opening round, bearing that out. It's like a basketball game where they played the four corners and stalled. <laughs> now, right now, Lafayette is trying to come out of that four corner and come up with a little bit of his own defense, if you want to say it. He switched southpaw. Switched the southpaw, took a right hook from Johnson. As we open up a little bit here, you know the numbers are going to go up as the fight progresses. If you were Lassierva, you would like to keep the numbers down and try to steal one here, hoping that Johnson had an off effort. Good chopping right hand by Lassierva. Johnson goes to the bottom. Lassierva fired that right hand and looked for Mexico City and it got all the way home. A looping shot. I'm not saying this, that this is the case yet. But early on here, sometimes when you're a terrific fighter, considered one of the pound-for-pound -pound fighters, which Mark Two Sharp Johnson is considered, you can overlook guys. And it's very hard to know much about a guy like Jorge Lazieva. Most sure. of his fights have been in Mexico. And you can very easily go in there not quite mentally and technically prepared for the guy because unlike yourself, where the guy can know a lot about you, it's hard to know much about him. And the corner, if they pick up on that, will have to try to steer him away from optional title defenses and try to make every fight a big one. That's why he's been stalking some names. Let's see Everett turning southpaw once again. He's working that right hook real nice. Good hooks there by Lassierva. Now, what does he take away from Johnson when he goes lefty? Takes everything away from him. He didn't prepare for a lefty. He went in there not knowing much about this guy. 14 of his 19 fights of Lazieva's were in Mexico. You know that he didn't know much about him. You know that he probably may have overlooked him a little bit. Let's face it, Mark Tushar Johnson's the best fighter in this division. And now all of a sudden, he's got a guy who he doesn't know a lot about who turned us out for. Didn't expect that. And Lazieva fired some good right hands and now goes back to being a righty. Lazieva has focused on the body, and we've got the outlines of a very intriguing battle thus far shaping up. Final second of round two. Push him off, push off. Pleasing battle thus far between Mark Johnson and Jorge Lassierva in the second round. Let me tell you, Lassierva just caught Johnson coming in. He's not afraid to throw. Second round is over. Third round of an IBS Super Flyweight title bout. Jorge Lassierva, the challenger, and Mark Johnson, the champion. Johnson, the lefty, in the black trunks. Lassierva has been a lefty and a righty thus far. Dave Fontempo and Teddy Atlas at ringside. Max Kellerman, Brian Kenny, the boys in Bristol. Glad you're all with us tonight on ESPN2 Friday Night Fights. Second round action, and Lassierva, a little bit of a power edge on Johnson there. You know something, Dave? Sometimes your strength become a weakness, depending on the situation, depending on your opponent. Johnson has very fast hands. He's a guy who's very aggressive. He has a fighter's mentality. He's smart. He's technically real solid, Mark Two Sharp Johnson. But because he has fast hands, he's used to getting away with things that a lot of other guys wouldn't get away with. He's used to being able to outspeed guys. And sometimes you can get a little careless and you can figure that your opponent's going to be intimidated by the speed, throw your punches from a little too far away, and you get away with it. Someone slower wouldn't get away with it. He technically would have to correct that and get the distance. Johnson throws punches a little too far away, and this guy can nail him in between because he's not afraid to let them go. So the off angles not working the same way for Johnson thus far. And Lassierva fighting with a world of determination thus far. Just watch. You'll see Johnson sometimes. Great fighter, no doubt about it. But sometimes he hits all those punches, those fast hands, a little too wide. A little bit wide. And Lassierva can go right in between those punches. Now, I'm sure Johnson gets away with it with most guys because they're intimidated by the speed. They get defensive. But if you're not intimidated by the speed and you act like a pro and you step in and throw, you're going to find a target. 
while this is going on, Johnson has been hit a few times, but he has scored nicely to the body of Lassierva in this round. Something to keep an eye on later. Good chopping right hand by Johnson and Teddy. As you suggested now, he's getting a little bit closer as he's firing his shots. But he's he threw a couple wide punches there. Lassierva wasn't able to punch inside them, but that doesn't mean he won't be able to do it later. If something's wrong early, it'll be wrong late. Well, Lassierva has gone southpaw as well. And he can fire a pretty good right hook as a southpaw. He switches back and forth. And I'm sure, I'm guessing, but I'm sure, it's a calculated guess, that Johnson wasn't ready for these switches because there can't be a lot of videotape available on Lassierva who fought most of his fights in Mexico. And it's an option that he has... Maybe he just uses for this fight, going in against the southpaw, trying to take that aspect away. But we see Johnson closing ground here at the end of round three. So a very gritty round between Johnson and Lassierva. Well, there's uh, Big Lou Duva. And tomorrow night we've got more big action in the box with Arturo Gatti is fighting and we've also got uh, stevie johnston and man freddie on the card great card fourth round action here with mark johnson and jorge lasierva for the ibs super flyweight title and johnson looks like he wants to try and get closer to lasierva now and close down some of that distance well, that's the effort making it a little frustrating for Johnson. Not your typical walk-in guy. He's using his legs. He steps out, changes range. Little Claire, something happened there. Both guys seem to bang heads, and it's a cut. Looks like a nasty cut oh. from that over the right eye of Lassierva. You hate to see this happen. That's a shame, and remember the rules is if this happened one round from now, if this happened in the fifth round, you go to the scorecards after round four, and whoever's ahead wins. Lassierva has been boxing very well. If this would stop the fight now, we've got a technical draw. Let's take a look. Heads down low, coming together, and right there is Lassierva showing the uh, laceration yeah and there's johnson as well it looks like guys trying to get positioning on the inside and uh, they led with their heads there yeah and of course johnson was smarter johnson had his head turned a little bit so the banging occurred on the top of his head where of course there's less chance of a cut and less damage last year ever of course it happened on the face part right above the eye he's the one with the most damage Little thing like that, a guy, you teach a guy when he gets inside, when the heads come inside, you teach him to turn his head, get it on the side, so if there is a clash, you're not taking it in the wrong spot. So the head butt is gone, and you can see from the style of the fighters how that could happen. You've got everything going with the heads, and it really heats up in there. Well, it's changing the dynamics of this fight. It was a calculating fight. Now it's all of a sudden an all-out brawl. You just have a feeling that the cut will stop this thing sooner than 12 rounds. Lassierva really started to unload, and Johnson was right there with him. It would be a shame for this to end because of the cut early. It's important now for Lassierva to still keep his cool about him. There's a nice counterpunch right up a cut. He caught Johnson. We talked about it earlier. Johnson drove from too wide, and he got nailed. And here is Lassierva really trying to pour it on. And he's going to the wrong place, Dave. He should be going to the body. Just because he caught him one punch doesn't mean he should stay on the head. Once he had Johnson on the ropes, he should have went to the body because Johnson went right into that defensive mode. And Johnson coming right back at him. You can compare this with what would go on, say, in a baseball game when you know it's going to be range shortened. You want to be ahead after the fifth inning in case it's called. And in this case, both of these guys want to be ahead after round four in case this one is called because of the cut. You hate to see this cut come into play here because I'm telling you right now, Lassierva is two things. He's a good fighter, and he came in here with a specific fight plan, prepared to try to win this fight and have a shot to win this fight. Of course, we can't go by four rounds. You have to do it for 12 rounds. But so far, Lassierva has really been prepared to win this fight. He has that look about him of a guy who's not intimidated, being in strange surroundings. He's taking some shots from Johnson, but he's also doing some things very well. 
and things are coming into place as he gets his eye rubbed there by Johnson. You know, that might happen throughout the fight. A headlock by Johnson. And this one promises to get sloppier. I'm telling you, I said earlier, Johnson will go too wide sometimes. And he can get nailed because of it, and he did this round. Well, one way or another, the scorecards will now come into play. Sometimes you have speed, you get a little careless, you throw too wide with that speed. And he, Johnson throws wide, and what happens? He gets nailed right in between that wide punch. And as last year ever came on, Johnson paid a further price for missing. We start the fifth round. Jorge La Sierra, Mark Johnson, scheduled for 12 for the IBF Super Flyweight title. But a nasty gash over the eye of La Sierra threatens to short circuit this fight and bring the scorecards into play. If that would be the reason this fight were to be stopped, if they went back to the clash of heads in round three. So given that, Teddy, how do you see this through four rounds? Well, I have it 39 to 38, that's the ever. Real close fight, but he has a definite game plan. First of all, he's not just a walk-in face fighter. He changes to southpaw, he's tricky in there, he changes distance, see how he gets out, he doesn't wait around for those fast hands to get off. Well, Lassierva had the dream in the last round. He fired fewer punches and landed more. And Mark Johnson, very low on his percentage in that round, bearing in mind the speed factor of going wide that you talked about. He's got Mark Johnson now fighting one-dimensionally. He, he has done a smart thing, Lassie Ever. He has Mark Johnson not using his counterpunch ability, not even using his speed and his jab and all the things that make Mark Johnson a terrific, maybe a great fighter. Right now, he's got Mark Johnson just being a fighter, just walking in, being tough, which we know he is, and being aggressive. Lassie Ever has done a good job to get, to reduce Johnson to just that. That's easier to deal with than all the other dimensions of Johnson. So he's taken a lot of the subtlety away. He's taken a lot of the cuteness away at this point. Exactly. Sierra, the, the cup looks to be flowing more now out the side of his eye, which will be good news for the duration of this fight if he can keep it right there. It looks ugly. The question will be, is it out the side or over the top? Steve Spoker gets a good look. Still more out the side right now. That's the ever does not let himself get trapped on the ropes, if you notice. Every time he gets near the ropes, he knows where he is, and he spins off them before Johnson can pin him and go to work on the body. Well, Mark Johnson, on a night where maybe he does not have all of his best stuff, is going to have to suck it up and prove that he belongs at the top of that elite list. And that is something that all those fighters we mentioned, the Shane Mosley's, the Oscar De La Hoyas, have to do from time to time. You can see Lassie Ever is waiting to punch, waiting for Johnson to lead with something wide. When a, guy throws, when a guy throws wide punches, Dave, there's not a real big trick to counter it. All you have to be is a solid guy who's not afraid to throw the punches. When a guy throws wide, if you're not afraid to step in his throat, you're going to land. A lot of times, guys don't land with guys wide because they're afraid to throw. That was a nice short right hook. So La Sierra getting Johnson in circles here as the fifth round comes to a close. Well, how is this fight taking a toll on the family? There is Samantha Johnson, Mark's wife, and their children getting into it. and They're involved as daddy's in a war. Sixth round action, Mark Johnson, the IBF Super Flyweight Champion, and Jorge La Sierra, who has given him all he wants, two fives. You know what happened the last round, Dave? The round before was a tough round for Johnson. Johnson came out, and he was just a fighter. With all his talent, one thing about him, he has the temperament of a fighter. He came out, he took control of that round, just the old-fashioned way, just by forcing his way and forcing his will onto La Sierra. Now that he got that out of the way, it almost looks like he's settled back to boxing. Look at him. It looks like he's content to say, now I don't have to prove myself. I don't have to put my foot down right now. I don't have to prove a point. Now I'm going to go back to what I do well. So the first part is to stop the slide. Take a round to do that, and then able to get yourself going. And that is the mark of a veteran, because some guys could panic and try to do it all at once. You can see it right now by the way that he's boxing, in contrast to the way he boxed the round before. 
Well, we're seeing the jab from him now as he leans in. And there's the blood out the right eye of Lassierva. But since it's on the side, he's okay for now. Look how Johnson uses the jab to the body. And then the next time he'll fake it to the body and throw the left hand, left hand to the head. Well, instead of throwing those shots that were wide to demonstrate his hand speed before, Johnson is shaking and baking now, putting himself in position to punch and then firing his shots. He's doing what he should do, what his real forte is. His forte is to be smart. And there is Teddy's card indicating parity here. And for Johnson, that's fine right now because that includes the fact he's already righted the ship. When Johnson boxes smart, he separates himself from the other guy. But when he's just a walking guy with fast hands, who's real tenacious, the other guy has a chance. He lowers his level of ability a little bit. He's still a fighter. He'll still beat most guys. But he gives the guy a chance. If we go all the way, Johnson has a friend in the distance of this fight. He's gone 12 rounds in four of his last seven bouts. Has the big experience and knows those championship rounds. But Dave, you know, Johnson has a dilemma here. When he boxes smart like this, he's very effective. But let's face it, he's a small guy. He wants big money fights. He says he wants a million dollar money fight, which is almost unheard of in this weight class. Michael Carvajal was the only guy to do it. And he had a partner. He had Shakita Gonzalez, where he could do it with, like Ali had Frazier. Johnson doesn't have that. But the dilemma he has is he wants to make money, but he wants to be smart, but he's got to be exciting, too. We'll talk about that more in the second half of this fight. Seventh round action, second half of the fight. Mark Johnson and Jorge Lasierva battling it out for the IBF Super Flyweight Championship. Johnson in the black trunks, the southpaw. And Lasierva has been both a righty and a lefty. Dave Fontempo and Teddy Atlas at ringside. And Brian Kenny and Max Kellerman, the boys in Bristol, are in the studio. Our night of fights here, ESPN2, Friday night at the fights. And in the last round, Teddy Johnson scored with 11 of his 15 connections, were the jab, backing up the point you made that he had settled down and was doing what he had done best. Yeah, no doubt about that. There's been transition already in this fight after six rounds. Early on, Lassieva was making Johnson fight the kind of fight that Lassieva wanted him to. Coming with wide punches, not use all his talent. Coming with wide punches where Lassie ever could punch in between those. And where he could dictate pace. Get off, get out. Now it's changed around. Now Johnson is in control of rhythm and pace. He's boxing the fight that he wants to box. Now both guys could make the argument to themselves that they're very happy about where this fight sits after six rounds. Lassie ever, the upstart, not much expected. And here he is, very game into the second half of the fight. But it's going to be, as far as who wins, it's going to be who controls rhythm, who does what they want to do, who dictates what's going on in there. Well, now Steve Smoker will take another look at the eye of Lassierva. Get the doctor over. Okay, come Doctors do not stop the fight. Yeah, but their words are pretty much gospel. They make a recommendation for a stoppage. And we go. Continuing in round seven. So last year, but passed the test there of the doctors. A little moment of irony, Teddy. If he was conniving, he could have said, I can't continue and take his chances on the scorecard as Johnson is heating it up. But he wasn't that way. No, but I saw something there. He was blinking a lot. Almost like saying, you know, he knows everyone's watching him. He doesn't want to say he don't want to fight. And he's a fighter, no doubt about that. He wants to fight. But at the same time, he was blinking a lot. Like to say, yeah, I want to fight. But look, look how I'm blinking. Like it, the referee will say, yeah, but then you're blinking that much. Maybe I got to stop it. Now, it's either because of that, because he wants to do it in kind of a slick way to show the referee, yeah, I want to fight. But look, if I'm blinking, maybe you should take it into your hands. Or it could be the coagulant to stop the cut. The medicine is getting into his eye. 
That cut looked pretty dark to me. Almost, almost like there was an iron base solution there. And if it is, that can get into your eye and that can make you blink. Abatine and Adrenaline 1000, the most common sources of stopping the cuts in the corner. Yeah, you're not allowed to use an iron base coagulant, to be honest with you. As you just said, Adrenaline, Abatine, Thrombin, those are the things that are allowed to use. Seventh round action coming to a close. Last year, ever able to get through it as Johnson momentum goes up. Come on, let's take that thing under two and three. Get them hands closed up. Box this guy. Come on. Come on, I got it. Come on. Dennis, come on, you step around. You stand right in front of the man. You know the man. So you hear the corner of Mark Johnson. As he's it. getting it, and uh, of course, uh, Mark Johnson's on a very special list of fighters. Teddy's little big man. Yeah, I have number two, Ricardo Lopez. You talk about longevity. He's been undefeated for quite a long time. Mark Johnson's right there. Mauricio Pastrano, former IBF champ. Never lost. Lost in the weight scale. He lost his title, but not in the ring. Tim Austin, a terrific fighter. Paul Aiello, who just upset Johnny Tapia, I think belongs on that list. So pretty good little big man right there. Move into the next round here. La Sierra and Mark Johnson. Dave Fontempo and Teddy Atlas at ringside. And Teddy, I want to pass along that the, you were awarded tonight with the NABF announcer of the year for last year. Congratulations on that. Well, thank you. That was very nice of the organization. And uh, they came here. I wasn't able to make their dinner, but they, as you said, they gave us to be here. I appreciate it. Punches in round seven, and Teddy will, of course, uh, Take on all USBA announcers of the year and all uh, unify his titles. So the eighth round coming on here. It's Johnson. Johnson's fighting his fight, Dave. He's got it the way he wants to have it. Just a second ago, he threw a nice counter left hand. He threw the jab, stepped out, he hit in an opening, threw a counter. He's boxing the way he wants to box. Early on, he was just coming in, being just a fighter. Now he's being a consummate pro. He's being a real smart fighter, not just a fast, tough guy. But we were talking about before, you know, it's a dilemma for Johnson. Because when he fights real smart, beautiful, no doubt about it. It's like watching a terrific pitcher. But you don't get a made, paid a million dollars to watch a terrific defensive guy. So maybe you go out, you put your rounds in the bank, you can and then gamble late. But Lassie Herbert would not let him put those rounds in the bank early. He was very game. But now Johnson seems like he's figured last year but out. A lot of confidence coming. You have to wonder how much, even though the cut's not bleeding now, how much that changed the dynamics of this fight. When that cut happened, Lassieva, at least on my scorecard, was probably winning the fight. And now he's falling behind a little bit. You have to wonder how much that changed his confidence, how much that changed his strategy. And we're told that the doctor examining Lassieva, Joseph Carpentieri, and I doctor says that last year is having problems with the adrenaline which is burning his eye but that he wants to keep fighting so that the also that the corner is doing a good job keeping it out well we mentioned that before we mentioned that when he was blinking there had to be a reason for it and there we have the answer and that they were using the right substance the adrenaline so they, they were the right substance but they're applying it the wrong way they're applying it instead of putting a gauze pad underneath the cut where the residue will run into the gauze pad they're just putting it probably directly into the eye and of course the residue of the adrenaline is flowing into the eye and it's bothering them. you have to put a gauze pad underneath it to make sure as i said it doesn't run into the eye La Sierra and Mark Johnson coming to the end of round eight, and it is Mark Johnson feeling very good about what he's done in the last couple rounds of this fight. La Sierra and Johnson mixing it up. We come to the end of round eight. Mira <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Good. Okay. Good. 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 And there is La Sierra. Looks pretty content in his corner, Mark Johnson. Now that it's now a little bit more sense of purpose. Well, La Sierra has calmed down a little bit. He's not blinking so much. Seems like they got that adrenaline out of his eye now. That was panicking him a little bit earlier. A little reminiscent of Muhammad Ali. Years ago was Sonny Liston. 
when the, uh, it seemed like the coagulant got into his eyes and he couldn't see, he was starting to panic a little bit, and Angelo Dundee pulled out one of the great moves. He just said, get out there and move. Uh, you wonder if Lassierva has taken his best shot in this fight and if he has indeed gone as far as he can go. These are the rounds now that Johnson has traditionally owned. Off of this, what do you think against him and uh, Eric Morrell, who laid out the challenge after last week? Well, Eric Morrell, Johnson would have to show that he can handle the step up and weight. Morrell is a big guy, 122 pounder. It would be a matter of a lot of these terrific fighters. They can step up in weight class. They can do pretty well because they're solid. They're solid, fast fighters, they're slick. Even if they lose the power, it doesn't matter. They still have the skills. But Morrell is a guy who's not only bigger, and has big range, but he's a pretty good fighter, too. So, unless you have huge dollars, another reason not to go after that. Oh, I'm and sorry, you know, when you're talking about Morrell, I thought you were talking about Eric Morales. Uh, we were talking about Morales, oh. laid the challenge out, and Morales is uh, another yeah, name Eric, in that competition. Yeah, Eric Morales, of course, world champion 122. That's who I thought you were talking about. Morales, of course, is a guy that you understand why Johnson doesn't want to fight him. He's a guy who was a terrific amateur. He was on a 96 Olympic team. He's an undefeated fighter, terrific talent. It's hard to want to fight a guy like that when you can't make big money. He'd rather go after guys just as risky where he can make big money. If you're going to have the risk, have the reward. So here he is against Lassierva now, taking over the fight. Lassierva, very durable early in this fight. He was a threat and has remained so to some degree. But Johnson has been pouring it on. And again, Lassierva indicating trouble seeing. And Steve Smoker will bring the doctor over again. This time... I want to go to the car. We'll see how right, he makes out. Right here. So that's it, that's it. We want to take a look. Can't take any more with the eyes. This may be the so end. Take... Well, Steve Smoker just so said, we go heard go him, he said he can't car. take any more. Seems like he's made up his mind already. Okay. Okay. He said he can't take any more with that eye. That will do it. Why will come to an end? As a result of the cut. The referee Steve Smoger has stopped this bout and will go to the scorecards because of the accidental headbutt rule. We will have an accounting of the scorecards in just a moment. Well, this is what we told you at the outset, and it has played out. That is why it was very important for the referee, which he did, to indicate after round three it had been an unintentional butt. No, oh, no. he's a good referee. It happened Steve way Smoker. long when the cut was Spirit. open. And as a result of it getting worse, we go to the cards now. What he, he is saying he is that and said he couldn't see. the cut so we go worsened to the original Lou, butt Lou, what time as the rounds went along. And that's the reason the fight is stopped. Well, you see, what Smoker just said, he's been watching real closely, doing his okay, job. And he just said that the fighter, okay, Lazieva, was blinking and said to him that he couldn't see. So the referee was right on top of it. Right there. Now, if the unintentional butt had not been called, this would be a TKO. But the butt was called in round three, so you go to the scorecards. And the key thing is, and why you don't see this very much, it has to be an extension of the infraction. And in this case, it was. So it's a good call by referee Steve Smoger. We will go to the cards. I had Johnson starting to pull away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. There's La Sierra. The original accidental hood, but now we go to the cards. Right. And they tally up. They don't score the ninth round. They tally up up to eight, and they announce it from there. Okay. Okay. So you'll get the cards as they read. Look you, bro. The round in progress in this case is not scored. Teddy has it 78, 75. I'm very yeah. much along those lines with Johnson pulling yeah, ahead we we it in the middle rounds. rounds. Okay. You have to take it easy, babe. You have to take it easy, okay? No, no, Remember, stay in round seven, last year I had a chance to do this very same thing, and he opted to go on. But now the choice is not his. <clears throat> and then we go to the first score, eight, eight. Okay, babe. 
Well, this fight went through yeah, transition. Went through you, different, you, different phases this fight went through. Last year ever, when that cut occurred, all of a sudden the dynamics of this fight changed a little bit. Yeah. In the middle of a heated so, we're ready for the verdict. Let's hear it now from Mark Burton. Mark Barrow. Accidental Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the referee, Steve Smoger, has stopped this bout due to the red corner's inability to see from an eye damaged in an accidental headbutt. Due to the Association of Boxing Commission's unified rules, after the completion of four rounds, we now go to the scorecards. Judge Dr. Clark San Martino scores the bout 77 75. Judge Don O'Neill scores it 79 73. And Judge William Hutt scores it 79 73 to the winner by unanimous decision and IBF Super Flyweight Champion of the World, Mark Tushar. Johnson! Johnson! Mark Johnson was ahead, and he's able to parlay that lead into a victory because of the scorecards. So Mark Johnson had started slowly, but he was able to reverse course. He settled down midway through, got himself a lead, and because of his point on the cards when the accidental butt forced his fight to close, he gets the victory. Mark, when this fight stop because of the butt initially in round three did you sense that this would be a shorter fight and maybe change it well first of all i like to thank my lord and savior but this guy was very tough um i felt real good going into the fight then as the fight got it going on my legs and my back got to stick when they're cramping up but i take nothing away from his opponent he was a great guy and um i'm looking forward to moving on to bigger and better things 115 it, it hurt me this fight to make the weight so I want to go up to 122 and 118. I want the guys like Irk Morales, uh, uh, Marco Antonio Barrera, and Timothy Austin. If the money's right, I want Prince Amir. Uh, we talked about that. Talk about the butt again, though. What did you think after that? Did you think that it would change the length of the fight and might change the style of it, too? Yeah, well, I knew uh, after the head, but both of us was going to get kind of aggressive because I wanted to stop him, and he wanted to show everybody that he was tough to keep going with the cut. And um, that made the fight a little rugged. Both of us got a little out of current in there, but hey, that's how boxing goes. Mark, did it, did it switch into southpaw? Did that throw you off a little bit? No, actually, I loved when he switched to southpaw because I knew I could hit him with the big left hand every time he did it. I hit him with the big left hand, and uh, it shows people that I, I can switch up. I'm very versatile, too, but he was a great fight. He came in with a great game. Great did game he surprise you a little bit with some of his style things that he did? Because we know guys from Mexico, there's not a lot of film available. Well, actually, this one guy I watched, and he was one of the great, one of the best boxers out of the guys that I have fought from the Mexican guys. And uh, he uh, normally, most Mexicans normally stand in, bang. But he was a great boxer. He wasn't your typical Mexican. No, he wasn't. No, he, he, wasn't he was that. smart. Hey, no, he wasn't. What about the switching that he did as far as that? Were you, were you uh, figuring out to try to time him that way, or did you just figure you'd settle back into your game? Well, I figured, you know, as long as I'm doing what I'm doing, I can outbox, I'll beat anybody. So I wanted to do it my way and beat him. But first of all, I'd like to apologize to Max Callum. Um, it wasn't my fault that I, uh, they arranged the, the, the planes wrong and I didn't get in the studio with you. So I apologize for that, Max. And Grant, uh, they lost my luggage, so I couldn't come in with the new uniform. All right, so there's the victory by Mark Johnson, and he says if they do Earth something like this again, get ready. we'll do it with helmets. This weekend on Fox Sports, it's grand final time in the NRL with a special preview show before the big game. You won't miss a beat. Catch all.